Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us for what I believe is our first ever Google Meets uh, remote meeting. So it's uh, unfortunately unfortunate that we don't get to see all your, your bright and shining faces, but uh, it's probably easier for you to get away right now in this uh, crazy time uh, and to be able to spend some time with us for an hour and a half or a couple hours to uh, enjoy our summer meeting. You know, as you know, we would have been scheduled at Tamaris Country Club out in the desert. And uh, if Kyle's on, you know, appreciate the fact that you were willing to host and uh, hopefully we'll get you on the calendar at another time. But uh, uh, congratulations to everybody who joined us today. I know we're expecting around 183 people to be on the call. Uh, and uh, we thank you for that. And thank you for taking the time. Uh, a lot of great things happening uh, despite all of the craziness in our world. Uh, but I would like to, uh, before we get into the details of the meeting, I'd like to just remind you of a couple of things. Uh, please keep your speaker or your microphone on mute uh, so that it, there's background noise during the, uh, uh, during the call. Um, if you want to ask a question during the webinar, you are welcome to do so by using the chat function. And we have somebody at the section office, uh, Nikki and Bryce, most likely, uh, fielding those questions and they'll, they'll announce them. We'll also have an opportunity to have some open forum and have some questions come in at that time, if you like, uh, and we can uh, unmute your microphone to be able to speak if that's the case. Um, so with that, I'd like to call the meeting officially to order and we'll start running through uh, the day's activities. Uh, I would like to start with a moment of silence in honor of all of those that have been affected by the recent COVID-19 pandemic, uh, all of the demonstrations and everything that's going on our, our uh, first responders, uh, and of course, as we always do, all of those who have served and maybe pay, paid the ultimate sacrifice uh, by serving our great nation. So if we could call for a moment of silence in honor of all these individuals, that would certainly be appreciated. Thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to call on um, Eric Lohman for the approval of the summer meeting minutes. I'm sorry, the annual meeting minutes, Eric. Perfect. Thank you, uh, President Latendre. If I could, uh, hopefully everybody had a chance to uh, review the minutes from our last meeting. It was a great meeting there at uh, Sherwood Country Club. And thanks again to Rob Oosterhaus for hosting us and, and his team there. But if everybody, uh, if anybody would like a motion from the floor to approve the minutes, uh, now would be a great time to do that. I'm not quite sure how we do that. Mr. Latendre, thank you. And President, sorry, President Latendre and President Keeper, thank you very much for your uh, your motion and your second. Uh, and I'm assuming uh, the vote, uh, unless there's an issue, uh, that will be a unanimously carried forward. So thank you very much. I think if your computer self-destructs, then we know that we have a problem. Looks like thank we're you. okay. So thank that you. Concludes that. It's been uh, approved. The minutes have been approved and uh, we'd like to move forward with the next step of the meeting. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Lohman. Appreciate that very much. Uh, I would like to go through and just introduce uh, all of the board members and guests that we have. Uh, forgive me for cheating off of my notes here, but I don't want to leave anybody off. So obviously uh, your board of directors, Vice President Robin Shelton is on the call. He's having a little technical difficulty. Uh, but he has joined us uh, and is on is on the call. Uh, Secretary Eric Lohman, as you see there, and Honorary President Todd Kiefer, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, your board members, Randy Chang, Allison Kurt, Joe Groman, Scott Hine, John Kulo, and Rob Oosterhaus, all are present on the call. Our independent directors, Kim Falcone and Ed Holmes, are also on the call. Thank you for joining us. We're on the meet, meeting. Our chapter representatives from Inland Empire chapter, Steve Adamiak. Our newest board member from the Northern chapter, Garrett Goodrich. Our desert chapter representative, Michael Holick. Metro chapter representative, Eric Mitchell. And San Diego chapter representative, Grant Strobel. Thank you very much for joining us today. And last but certainly not least, we're honored to have our District 11 director uh, present with us, Bill Troynowski. So thank you very much for joining us from Northern California, Bill. We also have many registered and maybe some unregistered past presidents on the call. And I'd like to recognize them and thank them for their attendance. And so in, in no particular order, uh, hopefully those that are, are uh, maybe didn't register or came on late, we have uh, 
Uh, we make sure we recognize you. So uh, our past presidents, Tom Mattis, Jeff Johnson, Pat Casey, Jason Taylor, Scott Walter, Greg Frederick, Dave Carollo, John McNair, Tom Sargent, Bill Holbert, David Foster, Andy Tooney, Perry Dickey, Bob Lovejoy, Scott Stubbs, Skip Witt, and Pat Riley. Thank you if you've joined us on the call today. So I'd like to start with my report. And just to let you know, uh, I know everybody has been struggling. This is trying times for all of us. Uh, it's a very unique situation that we find ourselves in. You know, the golf business has really kind of been uh, set upside down, but fortunately, we've been allowed to reopen as a recreational opportunity, I mean, a recreational activity, and I hope you seize that opportunity to, to keep your club open uh, and to utilize that. Uh, it's key terminology that we say that we are a recreational activity. Yes, we know golf is a business, and, and we all make, make our livelihood that way, but please understand that the the way we're being viewed is as a recreational uh, recreational activity, I apologize. And that's why we get to stay open. So I think it's very important that that's our narrative and that we continue that narrative. Uh, as we go through this, I hope you've found all the resources that you, can, uh, that you need, whether it be on the Southern California PGA website, and we have the COVID link on there, uh, whether it be the California and Nevada chats that we've done, uh, there's all kinds of information available to you at any time. You know, you can always contact Tom, Jeff, Nikki, any of the section staff, uh, myself, any other of the board members. We're always happy to answer your questions or help you in any way that we can. So uh, please reach out if you need some help. You know, in light of the current demonstrations that we've seen uh, and everything going on in our country, uh, I hope you saw the letter that Tom and I sent to you all. Uh, just letting you know that uh, you know, there's a lot going on and, and we need to recognize that golf is a is a catalyst for inclusion and, and uh, you know, great things for all people. And we need to really do our best to, to portray that. Um, you know, we really need to make sure that, that we include everyone and that, that we continue to grow our game the way that we do uh, and basically keep doing what we're doing to be quite frank. Uh, but it's a good reminder for all of us. Um, you know, I, I'm reminded, Thinking of a story that uh, just happened a few hours ago, uh, Dave Schneider from the Nebraska section sent Tom and I an email uh, and telling us a story about his 22-year-old daughter uh, challenging him that you know it's great that we've that we've grown up in this this uh, household that we don't discriminate against people and we don't uh, you know whatever it is and and, he, and it was a good reminder to him that gosh what have i actually done it's one thing to say it but it's another thing to do it so i think there's a there's a great message in that and it was nice that he shared that story i think we can all learn something from that so i hope we will do our part using golf as the catalyst to make change uh, and i think it'll make our associate our association and our section much stronger you know we will be better on the other side from this you know as we continue to open and and we get more and more movement at our clubs, whether it be allowing people to ride in golf carts, uh, finally, and for instance, Ventura County, to allowing people to pair up in golf carts, to reopening restaurants. There's so much going on and it's very difficult to manage it all. Thankfully, we have the communication between us and the, the Southern California Golf Association. Congratulations to those folks who have uh, served 25 years of service to the association, uh, to recognize those who have served 50 years, the Half Century Club. Ken Cherry and Andrew Hollis, thank you for uh, your service. I'd like to welcome the new members to our section. Uh, Julia Pushek, Jason Dudley, and Lance Peterson. You know that you folks are super lucky that we're doing this via Zoom call, because normally we make you stand up in front of everybody and sing your fight song. So thankfully, we'll have to uh, delay that to the, to the uh, winter meeting at President Latendria's Club. Uh, we have no new associates to announce, um, and uh, now I'm going to announce the, uh, unfortunately, we had some of our members that have passed uh, since the last time we've all been together via this uh, measure. Uh, I'd like to call their names out and then have a moment of silence, uh, if you don't mind, right after. But uh, those who have deceased are Lawrence Brown, Jay Hyen, Glenn McGuyan, Howard Fredericks and Ray Catan.
you would uh, bow your heads and have a moment of silence for those folks. Uh, thank you for that. Moving to some positive uh, news, um, obviously with the uh, COVID-19, uh, the association, uh, the National Association certainly made uh, some efforts to extend certain things uh, to make it more comfortable for all of us to uh, continue to participate in the association. One of those extensions or, or, or uh, one of the things that they've done is extend the timing of when our dues are officially due. Uh, for those of you who didn't know, uh, normally this would be about the time they'd be due. Uh, that extension is now into October. So definitely uh, make sure that you pay your dues and stay current. And uh, if you have any questions or concerns with that, please uh, give uh, the section office a call. Also MSR, uh, the timing of when MSR would be due for all of us has been extended <coughs> one full year uh, to June, 2022. So it gives you a little bit more time uh, to get through that. And uh, obviously those participating today are well on their way. Uh, just as a point of reference, 46% of our section has currently um, passed all of their requirements for MSR. So we're certainly um, moving in the right direction with that. And then um, the pathway to membership uh, levels one, two, and three, everyone has been uh, provided now a one-year extension for those as well. So it seems that uh, everybody is aware of the difficulties that we all now face, and they're doing the best they can to mitigate that. Um, on an education uh, front, and then I'm almost done with my presentation. On an education front, uh, I think the section uh, staff, Nikki, Tom, Jeff, uh, Bryce, everybody who's been involved in all the, the members and uh, all of our vendors that have uh, stepped up and joined us to help us continue our education and, and to get through this COVID situation. Um, have done a wonderful job. Uh, one of the things that we've uh, we identified, and I know some chapters have identified this as well, is that we need to circle the wagons again and, and, and get back out and, and reconnect with our associates that uh, potentially need our assistance. And I wanted to make sure that those associates and those who were interested uh, on this uh, meeting could pencil in the time, the date and time of June 19th at 2 p.m. Uh, Randy Shannon, uh, a professional in the Northern chapter, uh, is gonna be conducting uh, with the North uh, chapter, obviously we'll be conducting a Zoom call uh, and inviting all associates and those members that are interested to participate as sort of a town hall, uh, cracker bar barrel, a way to reconnect with our associates discuss ways that we can support them and um, kind of get the dialogue back to some other things other than pandemic and um, other topics that we've been discussing. And then also kudos to the Southern or to the San Diego chapter uh, led by Tom Sun's efforts uh, to re uh, to re uh, energize and engage uh, mentorship. And they've done a really nice job of, of trying to apply an apprentice with a member and that's something that we're going to challenge uh, all chapters to to uh, duplicate as well. And um, one of the things that uh, we'd like for you all to keep an eye on too in the future, you know, obviously as we've had a lot of education about how to deal with COVID and how to come back open and reopen out of COVID, uh, I think you'll notice that some of the education and some of the messaging will get back to more normalcy, whether that's best practices, uh, leadership. Uh, obviously, we just talked and discussed the associates. So. Uh, again, I just want to commend uh, those that have been involved with reopening our industry, and I want to give uh, kudos to Jeff, Tom, and Nikki, and the staff for doing an outstanding job of keeping uh, most of us, if not all of us, engaged. And for those who just happen to slip through the cracks, don't worry, uh, the, the help is on the way, and we'll, we'll get back to you as well. So thank you again for this opportunity to serve on your behalf, and uh, President Latendry, I uh, give the floor back to you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Lohman, for that great report. I appreciate it. And uh, now we'll kick it back over to Vice President Robin Shelton. I believe we've got all the kinks worked out. It's amazing how everything works in practice and then it doesn't work uh, at game time. So uh, let's see if we can get Mr. Shelton on the line now. Well, let's, uh, let's see how well this is working. Can you hear, at least hear me at the very least? We can hear you. Can you see me? I cannot see you. Well, hey, we'll, we'll go with it and I'll be quick. Uh, if anybody ever wondered why when you call tech support somewhere and they ask you if your computer is plugged in or your phone's plugged in, it's, it's because of me. Um, so having my own issues here. But quickly on the finances, I've obviously been in a, a, very, a totally new world uh, with COVID and how that's affecting everything. 
uh, we're trying to reforecast, but every week, you know, it's like something changes and it's hard to get, um, you know, a good reforecast in. The financials that we receive from PJ National Headquarters, those generally tend to be about a month behind, unfortunately. So the numbers that we have show our investment income down, but that's a month ago and the market has changed substantially in a month ago. So um, we're very hopeful and optimistic that, hey, our investment fund is, is kind of flat to where it's been as it's regained. Um, we've had some, our cash and cash equivalents of what's on hand. Uh, that's dropped from prior year, but obviously we've also had some uh, decreases in our expenses. Uh, so net net, we feel like we're in a good position. We've made some very good proactive changes. Uh, we've done some staffing voluntary, voluntary staff furloughs. Um, some of our leadership at our section office has also made some um, some very hard but noble decisions and sacrifices um, on their own. So we've had the last five years of uh, putting more money in, in our actual operating income account that's separate from our investment account over the last five years. Uh, we'll still see how it shakes out this year as we try to get a good reforecast in and see when things open up. Uh, but I'm sure you can imagine less events, um, less lot less junior golf. Junior golf funds a lot of our stuff. Uh, haven't been able to do some of that. So, like I said, we've made some very good proactive decisions, um, and we feel good about hey the direction that that we're headed moving forward. Um, so, in the interest of time, I will uh, yield it back to you since you can't see me right now, Tony. Well, thank you, Robin, and and uh, you know it's it's nice to report that we we actually have some good news, and there is a light at the end of our tunnel, and it's not an oncoming train, as the expression goes. Uh, I think the section staff, particularly, uh, you know, everybody top to bottom, has done a great job in in mitigating any expenses and making sure that we're able to survive these trying times. And and actually, the picture is is quite good. Um, you know, we've been able to navigate the storm. And I think on the other side, we're going to be that much better. Uh, once you hear a little bit about what's happening with tournaments and junior golf and, and things like that, as we roll into uh, getting back to normal, and we keep saying that, but uh, I think you're gonna, gonna see that we're, we've got some great things on the horizon uh, and our section is going to be okay, but it is uh, a true testament to all of your leaders, uh, you know, my fellow officers, the board of directors, and of course, uh, our fearless staff at the office. So. Uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't continue to thank Tom, Jeff, Nikki, uh, the whole team at the section office for all that you guys do uh, in uh, keeping us informed and keeping us afloat. And, and thank you very much for all the decisions and tough decisions you guys have had to make during these times. Uh, I'd like to now introduce our District 11 Director from the Half Moon Bay Golf Links in Northern California, Mr. Bill Troynowski. Uh, we're excited to have you, Bill, and uh, would like to hear What's going on with uh, back to golf and and uh, you know the re second wave of the relief efforts and or the relief fund and, and all that great stuff? So uh, it's all yours, sir. Thank you, Mr. President, and uh, you know, congrats to uh, Rob. Uh, Rob, uh, you, we've uh, spent a lot of time together. Uh, did some pretty cool things uh, uh, in some uh, BMIs and what have you. You're going to be a great uh, officer there in SoCal and continue the traditions uh, of, that, uh, of the wonderful section. I think one of the best, uh, very best we have in the country. Uh, you know, I, I have to start off by saying what a tremendous job uh, Tom and Wes and uh, Len have done, you know, here in District 11, you know, speaking uh, just as uh, uh, for our district and, and how the, the three EDs have just brought forth a tremendous amount of, of help to all of our members unilaterally uh, with the information. Bill, I don't know if you, oh, there you are. Yep. You got me? I got you now. Yes, sir. All right. Did, was, uh, I'm just curious, what was, did, did you get that by mic or is uh, the microphone, was not, it not working? All I heard was Len and Tom and then you froze. Okay. I mean, Len and uh, I, uh, Wes and you froze. Yeah. I heard you, Bill. It, it... Uh, Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I, I really felt um, that our, our executive directors really um, uh, hats off to them uh, for, for their hard work in, in making things happen and the staff at all of our section offices uh, working through the difficult time uh, to, to support our members has been tremendous. Um, you know, with that, 
the report that I have has bit has shifted a bit as you would expect. Uh, all of the wonderful things that you know we had moving, frankly, moving since uh, 2017 with the anticipation of the new tele television contract, um, our section support initiatives, uh, some of what uh, we had um, you know planned uh, in the way of uh, member support uh, just has shifted um, because of what we're up against. And as an example of that, you know, you alluded, Mr. President, to the Golf Emergency Relief Fund. Uh, as you know, uh, phase one uh, was completed on April 17th. Uh, as expected, um, you know, something that large and that aggressive, um, it, it came off quickly and we did have some hiccups at the beginning, but at the end of the day, uh, we helped 2,200 members and uh, we, uh, all together helped 3,300 people in the golf industry and delivered $4 million in relief fund. Uh, in the initial first phase, uh, you were able to apply for relief from $500 to $1,500. This next wave that came out and opened up on May 27th, uh, you'll be able to once again uh, go in and apply for up to $3,500. Uh, however, between the first and the second phase, if you're um, successful in, in uh, gaining uh, relief from those funds, the total aggregate uh, can't exceed 3,500. So, you know, while not perfect, uh, it is an example of how your uh, leaders came forth and, and put the members first and pushed out uh, an opportunity to, to help out and, and get us some relief uh, where we needed it. You know, with that, um, it's it's a really complex situation as you've had in Southern Cal, uh, in Northern Cal, what they've expected here, what we've experienced here, and over in uh, Aloha. You know, all three all three sections within our district have really had to come up with um, some creative plans to figure it out. You know, funding that we typically would see from our um, uh, PGA Tour qualifiers and, and various events, timing of which would um, help us in cash flow has, has shifted things. Um, on the macro scale uh, and serving on the budget committee for the uh, PGA of America, I, I can't say enough how complex the budget situation has become. Uh, it was not just 14 days prior to where the country literally shut down that we approved the 2020 operating budget. And in that budget, uh, 10.3 million in profit alone uh, was expected from uh, a domestic Ryder Cup year. You know, so since that time, as you would expect, uh, the, the budget uh, and the processes and those uh, elements that we put together to support uh, have, have all shifted and changed. And while it's certainly far from landed, um, it's very, very complex. Um, just looking at the PGA Championship alone, um, one of my updates is really not very much of an update. I'm not sure that uh, what I'm about to tell you, you haven't already heard, but you know, the um, PGA Championship in Harding Park was moved uh, out of May into, into August, and um, it, it was a challenging championship to begin with. Uh, with for various reasons and ticket sales were uh, just about ready to make a surge and then bang, uh, you know, here we go with uh, COVID-19. Uh, where it stands today, uh, is what I understand from HQ and from the tournament team is plans are still to host the uh, PGA Championship. Um, keep in mind, a huge portion of our uh, broadcasting fees uh, rely on these championships. In fact, uh, in 2020, uh, our broadcasting deal increased by 24 million. Uh, so pulling off these championships, uh, both the Ryder Cup and the PGA Championship are extremely important uh, to the overall budget process. Uh, and as I said, it, as it stands, it's, uh, it's on, but likely uh, not, to, not to host any, um, any, any guests or any uh, spectators. Uh, altogether, uh, I learned just uh, this morning that it may not be more than 2,000 people in total, including caddies and uh, players, and less than 40 from the media will be on site up at Harding Park. 
uh, if plans move in the direction that we've heard. So uh, very interesting development indeed. Um, I want to say uh, thank you for uh, just moving forward. Thank you for the feedback that the Southern Cal membership uh, has sent up regarding dues when the um, leadership uh, and the boardroom was addressing how we could handle the 2020 dues uh, timeline. It was literally right in the middle of this crisis and shut down and so many of us had lost our jobs. Um, it was decisions that were being made very quickly and hearing the feedback truly shows how our governance and how our association is the best that there is. Um, we were able to shift and as you know our dues moved uh, out to October 31st uh, after which if you're not paid uh, you would just move into a classification of uh, non-active and still have until June of 2021, uh, 20, June 30, 2021 to reestablish. So, you know, thank you for that feedback. Uh, you, again, you probably already heard some of this, but I'll just reposition uh, it. Uh, cancellations, the PGA Junior Championship, drive, pitch, and putt, the KitchenAid Senior PGA, um, you know, all were casualties of COVID-19. Um, we, um, you know, we're certainly hugely sad, you know, to learn and see all of that it's just an unprecedented time however the pga championship the pga professional championship uh, is uh, currently rescheduled to take place uh, july 19th to uh, july 22nd uh, at omni barton creek uh, very interesting much like uh, all of the members of norcal socal uh, and aloha and throughout the country you know we're preparing for an event on a day we're not sure it can happen in conditions that uh, we still don't know uh, for players that um, you know are hoping that they can get there uh, all these certain uncertainties uh, make for a, a difficult time but um, we're pushing forward and uh, we'll be resilient and we're planning the championship um, i'll say that just a, a short update on what's happening out in aloha uh, they're currently moving through phase two into phase three uh, but just getting off the phone with my colleague uh, in um, uh, Lanai, Scott Ashworth, uh, you know, he said that they have a uh, island uh, restriction, right, where you can't move from island to island, and they're hoping that that'll uh, raise on June 16th and they can start to get back to life. But just imagine uh, what that must be like for our friends out in Aloha. If uh, you have an opportunity, you can send a note or make a phone call. Uh, I know they'd certainly appreciate it. Um, with that, I'm going to keep it short. Uh, I want to thank uh, John Kulo uh, and the HQ team in SoCal uh, for helping to put together what I think might might be the first district uh, webinar or catalyst program uh, for education uh, in our association. I could be wrong, uh, but uh, we're we're really psyched on June 11th to have um, Jeff Price from our HQ team and um, uh, Todd Logan, or Ted Logan, excuse me, from Player Development uh, present on uh, pj.coach and pj.com. Uh, what, what I really have seen in the boardroom and seen um, uh, to believe what could be a major, major impact on our teachers to help us uh, make more money uh, and grow our businesses. So. With that, Mr. President, uh, I'll go ahead and yield the floor back. Appreciate the time uh, to address SoCal. Um, again, you all are fantastic. Congratulations on pulling together uh, a very, very cool uh, program and annual meeting here, or summer meeting. Thank you. Bill, thanks so much. I uh, wish we could uh, see your bright, shining face in person and uh, wish we were here to Uh, Nikki and Jeff, uh, we've probably spent uh, more time together on video than we ever anticipated, 
And so I'm sure that Nikki and Jeff will be very pleased uh, when we're back to full force uh, and uh, uh, and in person, because we won't probably won't see each other that much, uh, as much as we've seen each other in video. But uh, we spend uh, every week, uh, we spend at least um, an hour a week or more talking with each other and talking about the section and our activities. So uh, again, thanks to the entire staff for that. Um, not to dwell on what's been said, but uh, there's been a lot of activity, as you're well aware. Uh, Tony mentioned some things related to uh, uh, the activities related to golf and golf being classified uh, as an outdoor activity uh, under the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, and the guidelines by the governor, uh, as well as uh, local agencies. And so we've been able to work within those guidelines uh, whatever they may be uh, and however they may be in the various agencies. And I mean by agencies, whether it be the state, whether it be the county, whether it be a city, uh, because that's what, that's what seems to be most operable uh, as we go through this. And over the past couple of months, uh, we've certainly learned that, that uh, a local government, uh, working with local governments is so important. And that might be something that we carry forward uh, in leaving this pandemic and leaving this crisis is uh, our relationship uh, that we may have developed or that we should develop with our local agencies uh, because we've, we've found how important that is uh, in, uh, in actually getting things done uh, and uh, that benefit uh, all the PGA golf professionals in Southern California, whether it be golf cars, whether it be golf instruction, uh, whatever that might be, uh, county by county, city by city. So uh, it has been a challenge. It's It's been very interesting. Uh, some things were put aside that we'll now get back uh, into, notwithstanding our member and junior events, but on the uh, governmental side uh, aspect of it, uh, we were working diligently and very hard uh, with uh, Assembly Bill 5, California Assembly Bill 5, which was the independent contractor uh, regulations that, that most of you are aware of. Uh, there's been some additions. There's been an additional uh, few assembly bills, most notably uh, AB 1850, uh, which is authored by the same author who wrote AB 5, uh, Lorena Gonzalez of San Diego, and uh, uh, further defines, additionally defines uh, the independent contractor role uh, throughout uh, the industries or the industries. And we're hoping as the time goes on, we were hoping to have uh, some sort of guidelines and decision by the middle of, of the year, like now. Uh, but it looks like it's going to be towards the end of the year, depending on uh, all of the other initiatives that uh, state <laughs> legislators are faced with. But we're working very tightly with uh, Craig Kessler, who you all, you all know uh, as the government relations director for the SCGA and Kevin Fitzgerald, and then our uh, lobbyist. Uh, in Sacramento, Tony Rice, as well as the California Alliance for Golf, to continue to define the independent contractor status. So uh, keep, uh, uh, be very aware uh, that there's still an effort, a uh, strong effort. We're on the good side. Things are, are looking positive in that regard as far as that legislation uh, and getting the exemptions and the definitions that we need uh, in order to uh, uh, reinstate and to protect uh, our independent contractor status as far as PGA golf professionals. So uh, we're, uh, we're excited about that as time goes on. Uh, as far as opening golf courses and, and uh, golf facilities, uh, that's been uh, something that's uh, been a slow effort. But as I mentioned, it's, it's been a great effort by everybody. We appreciate everyone out there uh, really paying attention to the guidelines, living by the guidelines, being responsible to uh, to work under those outdoor activities, uh, as well as look at uh, what's been presented, whether it be back to golf uh, and the different uh, levels in regards to back to golf, and uh, uh, as well as some other uh, guidelines that are out there. Just as an example, I've been asked a number of times, are there any guidelines for food and beverage? Are there any, uh, any guidelines, <clears throat> excuse me, for retail? And there just happens to be, as a matter of fact, uh, OSHA and the California State Health Department uh, have put out guidelines uh, for a number 
uh, of uh, different types of businesses and activities. And retail happens to be one, as does food and beverage. Uh, and those are all posted on uh, scpga.com and our COVID-19 resources. So I urge you to take a look at, at those. Uh, the back to golf guidelines are also listed there. Uh, and with the most important playbook, when you go in to back to golf, uh, make sure you take a look at the playbook uh, that's available to you with the different levels and different stages uh, that you can ga gauge your uh, re-entry uh, into the, into the uh, uh, golf business, back into the golf business. Uh, very, very important documents. Those are all uh, uh, reviewed by the uh, CDC, and uh, that's something that's on a continual review, by the way, by the PJ of America and the allied groups that, that help put those together. Uh, we're looking, um, uh, as you all know by now, uh, and Mr. Gormley has a report later on in this meeting, but we're opening uh, our first member uh, event activity on June 22nd uh, at Monarch Beach with our Pro Pro Scramble. Then we go to our senior junior, uh, uh, the 29th, the, the week uh, after June 29th at Valencia. Uh, our junior tour, Nikki will make a comment about this. Our junior tour is getting uh, ready to up and open. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we talked earlier at the board meeting that our junior tour is already looking uh, uh, positively uh, towards 2000, uh, 2021 in scheduling events as well. So uh, those are all positive and uh, we're, uh, we're very happy. We're bringing the crew back in, the team back in very soon uh, as Nikki will talk about uh, and, uh, and we look forward to that. One more thing before uh, Nikki and Jeff uh, chime in here is you, you all should have received uh, an email this morning that was uh, uh, a letter uh, to you and, and really to the golf world on uh, outreach and the Southern California PGA and what we're doing as a community. And uh, uh, we appreciate you reading uh, the email and uh, we're living by the email and that's very, very important to the, excuse me, not by the email, but the points uh, in the email, uh, live by that and, and work through that and let's all be together in what we do as a community effort to bring people together uh, through our great uh, game of golf. And, uh, and everybody will, will hopefully, uh, that'll be a path for everybody uh, working better to more closely together and better together. So uh, appreciate you taking a look at that uh, and appreciate uh, Mr. President Tony Tendre uh, helping to uh, put that uh, email together and that letter together and and uh, it was very important to us so uh, with that uh, I'd like to bring on uh, Mrs. Nikki Gatch. Thank you Tom and good afternoon to everyone thanks for joining us today um, just to, to touch on a, a few points um, in addition to, to what Tom has updated you on um, I just want to give a shout out to our staff I, I know our entire staff is is on uh, the meeting the webinar today so you know, on behalf of Tom and Jeff and myself, thank you to all of you. Um, we've we've put a lot on you. We've had a, a strong focus on communication and education to our membership, and uh, every single one of you has not missed a beat. So we just wanted to to publicly thank all of you, and I want to thank uh, Tom and Jeff also for their leadership and guidance. Um, I can honestly say that I've learned something from each of them. Uh, every single day and have enjoyed, Tom, I have enjoyed our video conferences. So I um, hope we can continue that. But thank you for that. Um, as, as we've said, and as Eric alluded to, you know, communication and education has been a huge focus of ours um, over the last, it's almost been three months uh, since we started our, our remote work and, and went into, you know, stay at home orders and, and the like, and really wanted to focus on keeping all of you educated on what was going on from a governance standpoint, as Tom alluded to, and um, doing everything that we could to, to keep you focused and provide you with education op opportunities and and i believe that we've done a great job and we will continue with a lot of those things um, one thing in particular i want to point out um, you know again all of our staff has done an amazing job and and certainly a, a big focus on on communication so thank you to bryce and tyler who are behind the scenes uh, with this webinar today um, but even with, with our business development, you know, uh, thanks to Dave Kuhn, I mean, even through these tough times, he's been able to bring in some new partners, which is amazing. Uh, we've got a couple of partners that will be presenting some education following this meeting. So we hope you're able to stay on with that. Um, 
As another added value to our partners, we'll be starting a new partner preview webinar, which will be a, another opportunity for our partners, some of which you haven't been able to, to get in front of you and, and see you at events the last three months. So it'll be very similar to our Catalyst webinars, but it'll give them an opportunity to showcase their product and their services. So we kicked that off last week and we look forward to continuing that on a weekly basis. Um, player development has been focused on our teachers with the coach chat. Uh, we have filmed an instructional guideline video last week. We're finishing up editing that and that should be available to all of you uh, this week, not only focusing on best practices and safety measures uh, with individual instruction, but also group instruction that we hope will be available uh, very soon. So thank you to the player development committee and uh, Randy Chang and Josh Alpert and Tasha Bolig for your assistance with that. Uh, foundation, you know, we were very fortunate in the, the first part of the year to, to have some of our biggest events take place with the Foundation Classic and the Give event at Virginia. Um, those two events have helped us raise to date um, nearly $350,000 for our foundation, which is wonderful. And again, we were so fortunate to get those get those in in the first couple months of the year. So. That money will be will go a long way for our scholarships. This will be the, uh, our, our largest year to date in awarding scholarships. Nearly a quarter of a million dollars in scholarships will be awarded today from your foundation. So something that we're very, very proud of. Uh, junior golf, as Tom mentioned, will kick off um, June 22nd as well with a tour cup at Las Posas Country Club. I know the staff and our team is really looking forward to getting back out there with the kids um, and, and events are filling up quickly. Uh, we'll start with the players tour in JDT shortly after that. And again, we'll be producing a video for our juniors and their families to educate them on the steps and measures we're taking at our events to ensure that their safety and, and health is at the forefront of our minds when running their events. Um, tournaments, you're gonna hear shortly uh, from tournament committee chairman, Jim Gormley. He'll give an update on, on where we are with tournaments, uh, the guidelines that have been created, um, as you'll see at events, um, again, with health and safety at the forefront. So we look forward to that. Um, you know, Tom mentioned that uh, we're all looking forward to sort of getting back together. We certainly are, as you can see, we, we look forward to getting back together into that building you see on the screen. We have started a, a phased approach to our repopulation of the office that started a couple of weeks ago. And once we get into next month um, in early July, it will be able to, all, all 20 of us on staff will be able to occupy the building at once. Um, we'll still be allowing for some remote work for, for different departments, depending on what's going on in, in that department and, and with certain events going on. So uh, we look forward to that. And again, uh, just one final thank you to, to our staff uh, for all that you guys do. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Nikki. And, and again, uh, just to echo our staff, what remarkable and extraordinarily talented people who truly uh, are single-minded in everything they do, not only for our members and associates, but for the game of golf. Um, it, it's a beautiful thing indeed. Uh, I'm going to reiterate maybe just a couple of things that Eric had mentioned. Um, uh, for our associates, levels one, two, and three uh, have been extended for an additional year, uh, which we believe was an appropriate and positive move um, and on the coattails of that, there's uh, a resurgence of what we used to call launch pad, where we have a significant number of suspended members at level one. Uh, we're going to reintroduce that program, thanks to Randy Shannon and Dr. Allison Kurt, uh, by virtue of a seminar to take place on the 19th of June for uh, all of the associates that are on uh, this call and at this meeting, you'll be receiving an invitation and really hope that you'll take a moment and join us so that we can help you uh, not only further your education, but continue your evolution. Um, in addition to those levels being extended for a year, one, two, and three, we also have, as Eric had mentioned, uh, MSR credits uh, that are extended for an entire year through June of 2022. Um, and it's worthy to note that your section has provided no less than 50 MSR hours in the last three and a half months. And I would encourage anyone who's short hours who are interested in uh, participating to take advantage of these things that are happening on a weekly basis. And uh, because of this huge influx of hours, there have been thousands when you consider the number of members that have taken part in these uh, opportunities. Uh, a special thanks to Stephen Monday, uh, 
uh, who's become sort of the MSR czar in our office and uh, uh, has taken over the tall task of ensuring that all of the MS hours uh, are recorded and, and they're recorded promptly. Um, I want to make an announcement about special awards, this annual uh, rite of passage for those extraordinary golf professionals in our section. Um, we've extended the deadline for nominations. These nominations are available to be made online, but on behalf of Joe Groman and Rob Oosterhaus, uh, we've extended the deadline to make that nomination uh, of someone worthy and special until June the 12th. So I, I hope you'll all take a moment to just think about the people that have touched you and the people that have contributed significantly to our section uh, into their chapters. Um, and find a moment to make a nomination. Uh, and finally, um, there's not a moment that passes. When I mentioned earlier, our staff is single-minded in their dedication to you. Uh, if there's anything any of you need for any reason, you need only pick up the phone, and I promise someone's going to fix it, help you with it, or take care of it. Uh, and with that, thanks, and thanks to Tom and Nikki uh, for the guidance. Um, and the great direction that they're providing for our section. Yeah, thanks, Jeff, and and thanks, Nikki, and and we appreciate uh, we appreciate all of you and and the opportunity uh, to continue to work uh, with you and for you. Uh, left out just uh, one one thing is the um, uh, California Nevada chats uh, will continue through the end of this month. Those of you who have participated, we thank you for that. Uh, we've had an audience in those anywhere from 125 to 250. Uh, we decided to take it a week week at a time here. Uh, we're going to do this week for sure. Uh, we have Marvel Barnard, who is the president of the LPGA Club Professional Division, and then Seth Waugh is coming on uh, as well uh, on Friday. Uh, and then looking forward to the 26th, uh, we just got word that Mike Davis, who is the uh, CEO of the USGA uh, will participate on the 26th, with, which could be our final one. We don't know that for sure, but uh, that could end up being our final uh, California Nevada chat on the 26th. But I'd uh, like to extend the thanks once again to our staff, our team members who've really worked very hard, very diligently uh, to keep operations moving, uh, even though remotely, which has its own challenges, uh, and, uh, and we appreciate that. Uh, also to Tony and, and our board of directors uh, for uh, your patience uh, and your support uh, through all of this as well uh, and uh, and helping us uh, continue with what we uh, what our mission and our purpose is uh, and that's to support our, our uh, PJ golf professionals and their facilities uh, throughout all this so uh, uh, stay safe um, be responsible, as we've talked about before. It's all up to us whether uh, we can keep golf uh, moving forward as that outdoor activity. Uh, and uh, we need to practice those uh, uh, safety guidelines and be responsible for those. So uh, thanks again, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Tom, Nikki, Jeff. Appreciate that very much. Um, at this time, I've got uh, some committee reports, uh, but I think the education and the communications report were pretty well taken care of by Mr. Loman in his secretary's report. So rather than bring him on, let's jump right into the tournament update uh, with Mr. Gormley and Mr. Max to Spain. So uh, gentlemen, uh, hi, hi, Jim. Hi, Tony. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the committee met on May 12th. Uh, we had a... Um, a obviously a web call so um you know we have we've had to make some tough decisions i want to thank max first of all because he has done a lot of the legwork on uh following up with what other sections are doing as far as tournaments so obviously you're going to see uh uh we revamped the schedule and uh like tom said pro pro scrambles at june 22nd at monarch so thank you to uh eric loman for hosting that uh, senior junior will be june 29th in valencia thanks to he day and um the Stroke Play Classic is scheduled for August 17th, and uh, we're still looking for a site for that. So uh, we have had to uh, um, reduce field sizes, and uh, and we will be going to tea time. So um, some of the other things, uh, we moved the date and site for the women 
Women's California State Open to August 4th and 5th at Bear Creek. Uh, we have canceled all the qualifiers for the State Open and reduced the field to 132 players. So um, <clears throat> that was a, a committee decision. We also changed the host site for the sections uh, for the Senior Section Championship, which uh, is going to be at Saboba Springs now. Um, and mostly because we wanted to reduce uh, travel and expenses for the for the participants. So uh, we have canceled the pro club member, the pro junior, SoCal Open, the Stroke Play Classic, which is the second one, uh, mixed team event, uh, multiple APA events, senior and uh, PATs and chapter events. So um, obviously we are, we are fighting with some restrictions as far as I know, uh, uh, at least in LA County, we do have some issues as far as hosting events, so tournaments as they call them. Um, the Honors Women and Senior Cup matches have all been canceled for 2020. So, um, and something that affects us uh, financially is all stages of the Corn Ferry Tour qualifying were canceled by the PGA Tour. So that's pre first and second round stages. So um, as you'll see, I think uh, Max is, I think I would, I would assume this is on the website, but Max has said that, um, we will have uh, a COVID best practices. So as I mentioned before, some of the protocols uh, are fluid, but the fields will be reduced, no shotguns. We'll have the single rider policy. Uh, staff will be wearing face coverings for the duration of the event. Um, we ask that you not arrive, uh, 40, arrive more than 45 minutes for your start time. So if you there are, Earlier, you, we please ask that you wait in the car. So a lot of this will be on the uh, tournament documents that you get prior to um, signing up. So um, we have moved, um, we've removed all F and B for section events for the remainder of the season. I'm sure that'll make some of you all happy. I know a few in particular. Um, the Omega Player of the Year races are still taking place for section senior, super senior women, senior women in APA. I think we've modified that a little bit. Um, let's see what else we have here. And that's probably about it. Other than uh, we do have the match play are, are gonna be taking place with the quarter semis finals and the, at the Crosby on July 27th and 28th. Um, and really that's, probably pretty much it for right now i guess the ppc was rescheduled for july 29th or excuse me july 19th through 22nd and uh we have 10 players participating so congrats to those and i think that pretty much covers my report All right, well, thank you, Jim, for that, and I uh, appreciate all the efforts of the tournament committee. Uh, I know that you've probably been affected the greatest uh, out of everybody. I know everybody wants to get out and play some golf. I'm looking forward to Monarch coming up in a couple of weeks, so uh, that'll be great getting everybody out there. It was overwhelming to see such a, a huge response to that first tournament back and the wait list being long. It's unfortunate that there is such a wait list, but it's a, it's a good problem to have, I think, considering the time. So, Agreed. Uh, and thanks again for Max and, Max and those guys. So they did, Max and the staff did a great job in, in getting all this out. So thank you to them. Yeah, thank you. And, and on that note, I didn't know if Max had anything to add. Um, I'll give him just a second. I'm not sure. Nikki, maybe you know. He, I, I think he was fine with with Jim's report. Okay, he's he's not on the back end here, Tony. Okay, thank you. Um, on the tournament front, I, I did see a question come through real quickly uh, that uh, uh, was to Bill Tornowski, and, and I just want to—I don't know if everybody saw the question and, and the response. I know some people have called into this meeting, uh, but the question was for Bill, and it was any update on the Ryder Cup, uh, and. Bill responded by saying that at this point, I'm going to just read it. At this point, leadership sees the Ryder Cup held with fans as scheduled. Uh, headquarters does not see the Ryder Cup without fans. All reports at this time indicate the Ryder Cup will be held as planned. So hopefully that answers your question and that's a uh, good and promising news on that standpoint. We all know that uh, we're getting kicked off here in a couple of weeks at the Memorial, I believe it is, with 8,000 fans. So. Uh, we're going to start to see this uh, happening, and I think it's a good thing for all of us. Uh, and we'll we'll start to see more and more, which is good news. 
Uh, one last little note about reports also. I'm sorry, Bryce, you keep jumping back and forth on the slides. I keep calling audible on you, my fault. Uh, but the chapter reports uh, were submitted as written, and I want everybody to know that those will be available on uh, scpga.com later today. Uh, so, you, so if you want to see what's happening in your chapter, you'll be able to see those reports uh, through the website. Uh, now on to old business. Um, I think uh, the best way to do this is to open the, the microphones, if, or actually if anybody can, I think I guess we can open the microphones uh, to see if anybody has any old business. And let me know when you get that, when you get that, Bryce. Are we able to unmute everybody? Someone types in any items they might have. And we'll give just a second because I know typing can take a take a minute. We'll give a second call for old business. And I still don't see it coming through, so a last call for old business. If someone's typing out there, uh, we will always see it and we'll come back to it if we miss you. So that'll be, that'll be that. We'll move on to new business and we'll have a first call for new business. Tony, this is Bill Finch. I just wanted to, I haven't heard it, uh, I just want to announce that uh, there's a, the San Diego County Open has been uh, revived and it'll be no, um, October 13th through 15th this year. So we do have a new element that has been added. We lost the Southern Open, but one of our features, the San Diego County Open, will be October 13th through 15th of this year at um, the Enagic Golf Club. We have a spot. We're going to be sponsoring it and um, hosting hosting that event this year. Oh, that's great. Thank you, Neil. Appreciate that. A second call for new business. Tony did have a question come in. Are there any courses in Southern California that have not yet reopened? That's a great question. And I'm going to kick that one over to Tom. I don't believe there are. I think everybody's been able to open at least on a limited basis. Uh, have you heard anything, Tom, from uh, Craig Kessler? Anything different than that? No, you, you said it, Tony, that uh, uh, everybody, to our knowledge, has been, been able to open on a limited basis at least. Okay, great. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, piggyback on that question, I believe we're back to teaching in all counties in our in our section. I believe that's the case as well. Correct. And I will give a last call for new business. All right, with that, we'll move on to open forum. So uh, we can monitor the questions as Nikki has done. You know, if you type something in, she'll be able to see it and uh, we can get the right person on the line to uh, uh, answer that. Or you can just give us a heads up and we can unmute your microphone if you'd like to come on just like uh, Neil did. So uh, anything for open forum? And Tony, uh, just to clarify, Grant Strobel just let us know that Admiral Baker and CNA Air Golf Course uh, down in San Diego are still closed. I was just about to read that myself. So thank you, Nikki. I just saw that bounce in. Thanks, Grant. Anything else for open forum? We'll give a minute. I know it takes a minute to type or unmute your microphone. And we'll just do a last call. Nikki, I did just type in a question about issue with the uh, financial E4E application. Mine keeps freezing at like step nine. Haven't been able to finish the application. Uh, 
Uh, Bill, are you still on the line? He may, he may have dropped up, but we'll make sure that uh, that gets uh, passed along. Any last open forum items? Tony, I had a question uh, from Mr. Holbert. Will the 2020 senior players fee roll over to 2021? Uh, Mr. Gormley, are you still on the line for that one? I am. Unfortunately, we missed that tournament committee meeting. Yeah, I think we're going to have to, add, and that's a senior probably uh, committee decision. So I'll have to follow up with them. Okay. I would assume, I would assume we can do that. And as All a right, follow up, nice. sticking Perfect. with the tournament theme here, as our section championship still on? Yes, it is. We'll just give it another 15 or 20 seconds. Seems like uh, there's a couple of questions that have come in. Uh, if anybody is uh, thinking of anything or, or they don't have a chance to get it, get it in here now, uh, you can always email me. Uh, you can always email Tom, Nikki, Jeff at the section office, uh, any one of the board members to get an answer to your question. Um, so please don't feel like if you don't get it in now, uh, it won't be answered. We will definitely make sure uh, we get get back to you so so send it to us in email form um any others that came in nikki before we move forward uh one one last question or a couple um pro assistant in the desert still on that's my favorite uh it is a favorite for a lot of people and uh, as as of now it is uh still planning to be conducted has there been any discussion regarding shotgun tournaments? Uh, well, that's it's really by county right now until they loosen up the restrictions and we can go back to shotgun events. Yeah, it's a, it's a very fine line of what can and can't be done. And, and uh, we're, we are going to err on the side of caution uh, just to make sure that, that uh, uh, we don't jeopardize golf and, and jeopardize the fact that we've been able to reopen. So your section will definitely err on the side of caution, but uh, I promise you that we're going to uh, be on the forefront and, and in front of it as quickly as possible to make sure that you have, have events uh, uh, as planned. Uh, Eric, did you have anything to add, sir? No, I just was going <clears> to <throat> make a point, just, just make sure we can reiterate it, but I believe that chapters on their own can start having their own events, correct? And I know that like the Metro chapter is uh, just announced that the four ball uh, will resume. So I think that's something that we can maybe potentially look forward to as well. Great point, great point. Good, one, one other Tony, and I, I believe that Bill covered this. Um, sorry, I joined the meeting late. Is there any update on the phase two of the relief fund? I applied and was told my application would be reviewed and someone would get back to me. I haven't heard back yet. I think the application process is still open and that could be why you haven't heard back yet. I, I thought the dead I thought I saw the deadline of being June 4th, but I don't know where they are in the uh, uh, allocating of that. Um, Bill, are you still on the line by any chance? Uh, we, we may have to uh, get an answer to that one. Nikki, do we know where that question came from? Yes, uh, John Babcock. Okay, so John, we'll get back to you on that one. We'll have to reach out to Bill uh, and see where that stands. Making a note right now. All right, any last questions, Nikki? Any others? Uh, that was it. Just a, just a reminder that if anyone did phone in uh, to please email us at the section in order to receive your MSR credits. If you registered and logged on uh, our new computer, we can see your name and your member number. But if you did phone in, we'll need you to confirm that with us, please. Thank you. All right, thank you. Well, let me just say thank you to everybody on the call. It looks like we ended with 152 on the line and uh, I wanna commend you all on, on being part of our section's history. You know, We've had plenty of summer meetings in the past, 
but to my knowledge, this is the first time we've ever done it on GoToMeeting. Uh, and so you're all part of the section's history, which I think uh, is, is pretty cool. There's a silver lining to all of this, and that's uh, we've learned a lot of different ways to connect and a lot of different ways to do business. Uh, I'm proud of our section and, and proud to serve our section uh, as long as I have to, to, uh, to, to see all the great things that we do and, and really show appreciation to those behind the scenes that are making this all happen. So again, to Tom, Nikki, Jeff, the whole team, Bryce, uh, everybody on, on the uh, back end, uh, Tyler, I know you've been working on this as well. And thanks to everybody in our office for everything that you do for us. Uh, we can't do this without you. And, and I think this meeting was a tremendous success considering uh, today's uh, so, uh, society, I guess I'll call it, you know, where we are right now. So uh, this was great that we were able to do that. And I appreciate everybody that spent the time to partake. Uh, one reminder is that at the end of this meeting, uh, we do have an education opportunity available. Uh, Club Car and Rapsodo are uh, sponsoring our education. We'll have a, a short break uh, before we roll into this. Uh, if somebody needs to use the restroom or something like that, grab a glass of water, whatever it is. Uh, there is one additional MSR credit uh, that will be awarded for those that uh, stay for the webinar. Uh, and uh, Dave Kuhn, I believe, uh, is going to be running that for us. So uh, in, mo in minutes here, I'll, uh, I'll just turn it over to Dave and let him say a couple of final words and, and let you know what time they want to reconvene uh, for the education. But again, thank you everybody for your time, your dedication. Uh, stay safe, stay strong. Uh, we will get through this and there is life on the other side of this. And, and let's try to look at the silver lining and the fact that uh, we got to be first to open and uh, let's keep it that way. So uh, best to all of you and uh, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate all your time. Dave? Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Tony. And uh, I know we're actually gonna get going here with our partners. We want to, uh, you know, have all of you get to enjoy what they're about to say. So, you know, without further ado, I want to welcome uh, Club Car and Rap Soto. Club Car is gonna be uh, up first, and we have the team from Club Car of Kevin Colner, the Golf Territory Manager for San Diego, Orange County, and Riverside. Tyler Nikolic, the Golf Territory Manager for Los Angeles, Santa Barbara, and Coachella Valley. And finally, Buck Morrow, the Golf Sales Regional Manager for the West Coast of the United States and Western Canada. And then once they are done, we will go on to our next partner. But uh, Kevin, I will pass it along to you and thank you for being here and uh, enjoy. Thanks, can everyone hear me? I think I clicked off mute. Uh, good afternoon. Um, thanks for having us aboard. We really appreciate it. Uh, so myself, uh, Tyler, and I believe Buck are on the phone. I guess I'm the only fortunate one with a video camera. So, uh, and I apologize for wearing a hat, but I haven't had a haircut in about three months. Um, so, um, do I have control here to click through here? There we go. Perfect. So here's kind of a conversation piece for today in our agenda. Uh, everybody's back. Thank goodness playing golf again. And uh, I'm sure we're all really uh, happy about that to get back to what we know best. Uh, so we have on here kind of a fleet care 101 return to work checklist. Um, you can find all these details on clubcar.com in regards to sanitation methods and so forth. Um, so we'll, we'll brush over that. Uh, then we'll talk about some exciting news for club car uh, coming out August 1st. We have a new, uh, uh, lithium pack we'll talk about which is going to be best in class and then uh, with all the the walk the walking and uh, and talking going on in regards to uh, uh, other revenues like tempo walk if you haven't seen this uh, it's going to be a real exciting conversation piece and then uh, we'll conclude with uh, club car connect some new features there um, and then some questions and answers if we have time so uh, coming back to work with the uh, the checklist in regards to uh, your golf car fleet. Uh, first off, we want to really thank all of our partners out there. Uh, we've been open uh, during the pandemic, operating in Augusta, which is our headquarters, producing cars, not only on the golf side, but on the consumer side uh, and the rental side. Uh, so it's been tough times for us all, but we're all happy to be here. Um, going back to golf, uh, cleaning and our advice here um 
I'm waiting for the PowerPoint to update. Um, can we get a next slide, please? Oh, there we go. Uh, so here's kind of a return to work checklist and then our cleaning and disinfecting, which I think is mo most important. Uh, I'm sure you're all doing it now. We have some advice, uh, not only on the golf cart itself, but on our screens. If you're a Club Car Connect slash Vistage customer, it's a, just another touch point that needs to be cleaned because you're gonna get a lot of hands and fingerprints on that. Um, here's kind of like the 30 foot view of it, but you can go to clubcar.com on our home page and we can go in the weeds on it as well. Um, so it's pretty uh, pretty simple there. All right, the exciting stuff. Uh, model year is August 2000 for us, and we've been in the lithium game for a little over a year and a half. Um, so we have a new exciting uh, lithium pack coming out starting August 1st. Um, we're really excited about it because it's gonna be a best class range. Uh, so it's American made in collaboration with LG. It's a fully automotive lithium pack. And when I say best in class range, we're looking at 12 holes uh, further than anybody else on this globe for range, which is gonna give uh, range peace of mind and battery peace of mind, which we're really excited about. Um, going into some of the features and benefits of this pack, uh, we switched, uh, if we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, we switched um, a lot of the internal structure of the pack, which I'll cover the surface area of, but here's some of our keywords for marketing. If we can jump next, that'd be great. The big thing is with lithium, as we already experienced, is zero maintenance. Uh, when we talk about club car zero maintenance, um, we changed our lithium pack to a die cast aluminum pack. So the cool thing about this is it's IP67 rating, which means it can be completely submerged into water up to one meter in depth for up to 30 minutes with no damage to that pack. So we all know if we don't have car control in our cars that that, that asset could go into a pond or a lake and worry about damage and billing for that car. Um, hopefully you can uh, recoup on that, but knowing that you have 30 minutes and this golf car will drive as new, which is pretty cool. Um, Another big touch point is the ROI. Everybody loves return on investment. Uh, yes, lithium is a little bit more money than lead acid, but the ROI is huge. Um, we are the only company right now that can do off-peak charging. So your lithium cost savings are gonna be uh, at least 50%, if not more. So off-peak works through our uh, Club Car Connect, our Visage screen, and you can actually stagger your cars and charge an off-peak uh, kilowatts, which we know is very expensive, especially with SDG and in San Diego and in Orange County as well. So the, the ROI is huge there. So you can stagger your cars and charge from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m., uh, you know, 11 p.m. to 1, 1 a.m. and so forth, which really helps on that ROI and the savings. Um, going forward, here's kind of our, our piecemeal here in regards to uh, the new pack. Uh, something that's uh, exclusive to Club Car as well is OTA, uh, over the air updates. So we're very similar with Tesla, where Tesla can update and download and diagnose all their software for all their cars on the globe over the air. Uh, we can do the same thing with our fleets globally. So we're constantly uh, uploading, downloading, diagnosing uh, that battery pack and making sure you have the most efficient golf car on this planet, which is, new, uh, which is very unique to us. Um, we talked about off-peak charging, that's exclusive to us as well. And then we talked about the new range. Uh, this car is about 215 pounds lighter than our lead acid car. So lighter turf compaction. Uh, we also, uh, when you take out all that weight, you gotta modify the suspension cause uh, you gotta make up for that stability. So we modified the rear leaf springs um, to make sure this car is stable as a lead acid car in regards to the weight. The center of gravity in regards to the lithium pack uh, it's the full width of the golf car and 65% of the weights on the passenger side. So if you have solo ridership that we're all experiencing now, except for San Diego, uh, you have that stability as well. Um, let's go to the next one, if we don't mind, please. Here's kind of, it talks about uh, the layers of protection with the die cast aluminum that I mentioned earlier, the IP67 uh, rating. We have a DBR, we call that the dynamic brake resistor. So with lithium, uh, you get a lot of excess energy uh, that comes in the battery regen when you're braking. So our DVR goes up to 1,000 watts, 
which means it releases that heat and it doesn't store it. Lithium acts a lot uh, uh, different, more different than lead acid in that regard. So you have to have this enhanced uh, need on the golf car. Um, our, our BMS, our battery management system, it's like the brain of the golf car, which is exclusive to us as well. This is not only a lithium battery, but it's a smart car. So it's constantly communicating over the air and we're di constantly diagnosing, it, diagnosing that battery pack too. Um, all of our terminal covers are covered as well. So that's very important in regards to if you do get water in the battery well, everything is hermetically sealed. So it's airtight, dust tight, and water tight. Uh, something new to Club Car, which is very exciting for us, is this is our first AC motor golf car. So it's going to haul butt going uphill. I almost call it like the mini ludicrous mode, like a Tesla, which is really nice. It's safe, but it's very, uh, very cool because we're excited to have an AC motor. Um, and it, it communicates great with the lithium pack. That's why we decided to put it in there. And it's much more efficient than a DC motor. Uh, we actually have two different amp controllers, which is unique to us as well. So with the terrain that we have in Southern California, uh, we have a 375 amp controller, which allows that uh, golf cart to have that increased speed going uphill without uh, absorbing any of that excess heat. So all of these different intricate parts work together to give you that efficiency. Uh, the suspension we talked about, we talked about the weight. And if we can hop to our next slide, uh, we're gonna piggyback into Vistage, which Tyler's gonna take over shortly. But uh, we talked about the over the air, everything communicates through our 10.1 inch screen, it's an Android screen, which is new um, going forward. And then I'll let Tyler kind of jump in on that and uh, we'll go from there. So Tyler is our uh, Los Angeles, Santa Barbara and Coachella Valley rep. And uh, we both work together to run Southern California. Yeah, hey Tyler, everybody. Kevin, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Kevin? Oh, perfect, good to go. All right, uh, yes, so Vistage. Um, we'll jump straight in. Uh, here, Kevin, did, were you offload? Did you already cover the Bluetooth diagnostic tool? I actually do that and then go into Tempo Walk. I apologize, I jumped the gun. Okay, perfect. If we can go to the next so the, screen. That um, yeah, the Bluetooth uh, diagnostic tool is how we access the brain of the lithium car now. The an old IQDM that we plug in and have to do everything from the handheld now, it's all from an Android tablet. Uh, you can change the setting on an individual car from the sleep timer to the off-peak charging, the performance setting for the acceleration, your motor braking, your pedal up, whether it's a soft or a firmer feel, what you guys are going for. And everything's now done from a tablet and Bluetooth to the car. Um, the diagnostic tools used on individual basis, the visage is used when you're talking about the whole fleet. Now, I'm going to jump straight into, uh, if we want to skip this next slide, we're going to jump to the Temple Walk real quick. And Kevin mentioned it earlier, Temple Walk is our autonomous caddy. It's a small transmitter that sits on the back of your belt, and the Temple Walk will follow you where you go. Uh, it's a simple little switch, just like uh, putting down your bag, you switch off the unit. It's a wonderful device, weighs about 95 pounds. The single battery, 24 volt lithium battery does last at least 36 holes on most golf courses. So you can see these units going out twice a day. Each unit comes with a cooler that can hold a six pack of Coca-Cola, uh, waters or uh, adult beverage if you choose. There's a uh, space on the other side for a sand bottle, water bottle, accessory pocket like a wet towel or tees. And then there's also a, a tablet on the front with GPS yardage that's set for your golf course. Um, the wonderful thing about the Temple Walk is that four of them store in the same space that one golf car does and then it gives you an added revenue angle uh, for walkers who would typically want to bring their own pole cart or if you have older pole carts on property this, this definitely generates a new new type of revenue that you guys currently aren't getting from walkers if you reach out to either myself or kevin we have a uh, little profit calculators we would be happy to send out um on the next uh slide we'll jump more into temple walk kevin prepared uh, some of our pricing we knowing how uncertain scary these this time is that we're in right now we wanted to set up some options where there weren't any payments here in 2020 and that uh, invoices could start being paid starting january 1st in 2021 
So Kevin put together some different delayed payments and skip payments for everybody to see what our pricing looks like, uh, to give you guys an idea of how you can afford to get it now delivered, but not to pay anything until next year. And this will take us into the next slide for our Visage. Visage has grown quite a bit as technology has uh, in everything we do. The new Shark experience inside of Visage uh, works with Greg Norman on swing tips. You have access to Yahoo News. You have access to the PGA Tour Live. Um, all, all events by WGC and majors will be live on Shark Experience along with local radio stations and all access to Intune Radio. Uh, the Shark Experience is a new type of entertainment for the golfer out in the, uh, in the space that, you, that we really haven't seen. With the Shark Experience, we have built-in speakers, two um, speakers located at the top of the or near the canopy near the screen that will play either the video or the music you're, you're requesting. Um, Shark Experience, we would introduce you to Jim Hoppenrath, our senior technology manager, and Jim would be happy to do a demo at any time. Um, the next, the really important features on the back end for the clubs is our next slide when we start talking about tracking and control. With the tracking and control features, as this here we're showing you tracking. You can access this from your computer inside the shop, project it onto a larger screen, or access it from your actual tablet at, at home. You can see where all of your fleet car, cars are, as well as if you choose to connect your maintenance units where all your staff cars are. Uh, with tracking, you can not only see where they are at this moment, but also see where they have been as well. The control on the other side, you'll see that we have, we can control where each car goes, slow, uh, slow down in certain areas. We call that variable speed control. It is a proprietary to just club car. Uh, can we do it in the next slide, please? Perfect. And here you can see what tracking and control can really do for you. So the first slide is showing you tracking without control, where cars can go everywhere. The second is showing you that where cars are being held just as an, in a 90 degree turn. So when you set up the variable speed controls, you can slow down downhills in parking lots and then also keep cars on the property at all times. And that closes out our Visage slide. Kevin, would you like to Jump back in here. Yeah, sure. So thank you everybody for your time, your partnership. Uh, we appreciate everything, appreciate everything you guys uh, do for us. As uh, and we look forward to conquering 2020 with you uh, and uh, go from there. Um, if you have uh, any questions at all, our emails are here. We have a local Instagram that we like to promote our partnerships with, and uh, and um, we'll go from there. So thank you very much for your time, and stay safe. Thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you, Kevin, Tyler, and Buck from Club Car. We appreciate it. Now we're going to uh, have our next partner come on from Rapsodo, Jeff Hodgkin. He's the golf sales director. And Jeff, are you there? I am. Unfortunately, visibly, I'm not, though. <laughs> no problem. Well, welcome. And uh, yeah, I'm going to turn it over now to Jeff to talk about Rapsodo and how they're uh, you know, line of products can help all of our PGA professionals when they get back to instruction and everything else uh, to improve their game. So, how you are, Jeff? Awesome, Dave. Thanks so much. And uh, before I get into that again, wanted to thank uh, both you and Bryce for uh, your flexibility and help over the past few weeks and months. Uh, I know it's been a little crazy for everyone. So, uh, you guys really have a lot of, um, you know, awesome staff here at the, uh, the SoCal section. So. Again, appreciate everything uh, that you guys both do. Um, again, wanted to preface uh, this by saying that this is just kind of a generic overview of what we do at Rapsoda. We have a couple different sports uh, that we cover. Um, I want to, we'll be sending around uh, a little survey as well as uh, a link to do a more in depth one on one webinar uh, with individuals uh, after this. So uh, if any questions come up, again, feel free to use this chat function, but I'm also available over the next over the coming weeks to really you know chat a lot more in depth with individuals uh, to discuss how Rapsodo can fit at their clubs. Um, so Bryce thanks for controlling the slides I know it's a little interesting uh, not kind of not really knowing what's going to happen next but um, uh, again Rapsodo was founded in 2010 
uh, in Singapore. Uh, we actually um, manufactured and produced SkyTrack, and that was our first product. Uh, and of course, SkyGolf is the one that sells it. Um, and for the, really, that's what we did for the first six years. Uh, you know, we're, we're based out of three different locations. Singapore is our headquarters. Uh, Turkey houses our development team. And then I'm based out of St. Louis, Missouri with the rest of our sales and marketing team. Uh, what, our what we focus on at Rapsodo is computer vision and machine learning. And essentially what that does is it provides, in this case, radar and camera optics to have a better understanding of what's going on in the golf swing. The biggest difference between us and you know, people like TrackMan is that, again, we're, we're cost efficient. Uh, the MLM, which I'll uh, get into much later, is uh, uh, only a $500 product compared to that of a TrackMan, which is $20,000 know, minimum. Uh, and again, the beauty of our, our, our development team in Turkey is that uh, they've made our app easy to use and easy to under understand. Okay, next slide, please. So after SkyTrack about four to five years ago is when we kind of started in the MLB, or excuse me, in the baseball industry. So over the past four years, we've partnered with all 30 MLB teams, over 900 NCAA teams, over 56,000 players are using our baseball products with over 5 million pitches recorded, All right? So we have a lot of following in the, in the baseball industry. And that, that, that piece of technology is in the $4,000 to $5,000 range. We have a hitting uh, monitor as well as a pitching monitor. Um, the back about a year ago is when we came out with the, the Rapsodo MLM, the mobile launch monitor. And that is really kind of what we've been focused on on the golf side of our business uh, in promoting and making better uh, for the golf industry. So if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide, please. And again, the next slide, this is just kind of pressing that this is now golf specific. So as I mentioned before, uh, for those of you who don't know about SkyTrack, it is a, a, a portable uh, launch monitor as well. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive than the MLM, uh, but still much ex less expensive than that of a TrackMan uh, at only $2,000. Again, it's providing immediate feedback on launch angle, velocity, backspin, side spin, trajectories, and your distance. And the SkyTrack is actually the number one selling launch monitor in golf. Um, it's been around for a while, obviously, so uh, a lot of people know about the name, and it's, it's too, up until this point, been one of the more affordable units on the market. So go ahead to the next slide, please. That's where the mobile launch monitor uh, comes into play. We released this product back in August of last year, so it really hasn't even been out for a full year yet. Our, our biggest, our, our big kind of release was at the PGA show this year. I know it was a long uh, trip for people in California all the way to Florida, but if anyone was there, uh, we had a, a booth set up as well as an indoor tent uh, for people to be able to use this. And this picture really shows the simplicity of the device itself. You can see there uh, that it's not really much bigger than your phone. Uh, I would like to say that it is iOS specific, so you do need an iPhone or an iPad. Um, and it, it, you can see that it just props right up on the device, that, that faceplate that says Rapsodo, there's a Doppler radar in there, and it connects with your phone uh, to via Bluetooth to combine, again, uh, radar and optical vision from your device to provide the statistics. And again, the statistics that we provide are club speed, ball speed, distance, launch angle, launch direction, uh, and club selection, of course. Go ahead to the next slide. As I mentioned, the beauty the beauty of this product is mostly within the app. There are a lot of devices on the market that can provide that information, but the way in which it's displayed is really different uh, and unique on the MLM. Uh, so they're going from left to right. Uh, we have some additional features outside of just the traditional statistics. So because we're using the camera from your device, you actually get to see a video of every single shot that you take. And that video is combined with the statistics to make sure you're matching everything up. It's very easy, or it's, I should say, it's very difficult to, to understand the full picture if you're just looking at the numbers and you don't have any information about the ball play. So you get, not only do you get the video, but you'll see there there's a little uh, a red line, and that's actually the ball tracer. So we provide the statistics, the video of each shot, and the shot tracer for every single one of those shots. So like what you see on TV, all that can be done from the from the palm of your hand and your phone. 
that next picture over to the right, uh, that's kind of our homepage. There's a lot of different ways you can uh, use the MLM. The most common one, of course, is that practice section uh, where you're just kind of taking you know, information from every single shop. But we also have some games where you can communicate locally with your friends or in this day and age, you know, across the country, wherever it may be. We have a close to the pin competition and a long drive competition as well. That next picture over again is our sessions tab. And that, that sessions tab breaks down, as it sounds, session by session, your information for every single shot. And over time, if you look two pictures to the right, all those sessions will accumulate uh, into your stats tab. And those stats are organized based on a timeline. So you can look at your, your information from your shots over the past week, month, three months, six months, year, or of all, of all time. And that's a really uh, prudent piece of information because that's going to allow you to understand and, and track your, your improvement. Uh, and as a coach, I assume that's very important. Um, next picture over is a little sneak peek of what we have coming down the line. And that is actually something called Coach Connect. And it's a, it's a platform that's it's going to allow you to connect with students remotely. Uh, again, that's something that we've kind of fast-tracked uh, given what's going on these, in this day and age. So I'll get into that a little bit later. But would you mind going to the next slide, please? So one other really cool feature about the MLM is that because uh, you're not only activating or accessing the camera from your device, you're also accessing location. And when you access your location, you can get a GPS view of wherever you are. So again, I'm based out of St. Louis. I went and played uh, 18 holes the, uh, just the other day, and I was able to kind of have, I was able to go out on the course and see where my, my drive landed at a late tea time, four o'clock, but 18th hole, it was about 8.30 my time and the, the sun was coming down, so I couldn't really see uh, my ball flight. But when I propped up the MLM behind me, put, uh, after I shot, I pulled up the GPS view and then I was able to understand where my ball went. So not only is it applicable uh, you know, in game, but you can also see a bird's eye view of your dispersion, as you can see on the right two pictures. And that's a very, very useful piece of information because it's allowing you to not only look at the stats, but understand where your shots are ending up. And then the next slide, Bryce, if you go to it, that's gonna be the video, uh, just a little piece of marketing materials that I'll let you play through. Experience the Rapsodo Mobile Launch Monitor. It pairs the camera in your phone with state-of-the-art radar technology to capture swing video and ball flight data. So you can analyze, adjust, and dial in your performance shot by shot on the range. We measure carry distance, ball speed, club speed, smash factor, shot shape, launch angle, and launch direction. There are three play modes, practice, closest to the pin, and long drive. All shot data is saved for review during and after your practice session. Evaluate your shot scatter, ball trajectory, including GPS location with shot stats. Watch and share your video that features a shot trace for real-time feedback. Use the Explore function on the app to see the best shots taken on MLMs from around the world. With breakthrough features like visual club change, your mobile launch monitor will be the first thing on your golf bag. Your game comes together at the point of impact. So get real-time insight for all-time performance. Rapsodo Mobile Launch Monitor. Pro-level data, every player price. Awesome, thanks, Bryce. As he gets the PowerPoint pulled back up, I know that was pretty, pretty much everything that I just said summed up in a minute-long video. But again, that provides some more visuals as to what's going on. Basically, to sum this slide up, all of our numbers are within two and a half percent of TrackMan's numbers, and again, at just two and a half percent of the price. Uh, we did all of this testing uh, internally out uh, in, in uh, uh, out by by. by out by Byron, Iron Byron, excuse me, um, and found you know really incredible results. Um, but we don't think that's just enough to do it internally. We wanted to make sure there were external uh, testers as well to make sure that you know what we're saying is true. So if you wouldn't mind going to the next page, please. The biggest thing is uh, my golf spy released uh, a review on all the per best personal launch monitors that they could accumulate uh, in 2019, and we were voted the best. Uh, outdoor launch monitor at that $500 price point or less. 
now we can go to the next slide. <laughs> there we go. So again, it's important to understand that yes, this is uh, only a $500 piece of technology, um, but it's also trusted by the experts. You know, we've done all, we've done the testing, we've done the research to make sure that it's as accurate as it can be, and we've we've assembled an, an advisory panel of some of the top teachers in the in the in the states. Mike Velasquez, uh, you know, a big name out west. Uh, Mark Blackburn, Dave Phillips of TPI. We have some local um, help with Helen Curtin in Missouri, uh, and then we also have, of course, Trillium Rose out east, and then Dr. Sasha McKenzie. Uh, so that's continuing to grow. We're getting a lot of good feedback from them, uh, especially around Coach Connect, which I'll, I'll get into in a second. And to that point, yeah, we're, we're always looking to grow and learn more. Um, so uh, these are our, you know, our trusted experts currently. Um, but after this, as I mentioned before, we're hoping to send out a survey. And this is this survey, these surveys that we send out is, is how we continue to get better. Again, we've grown so much in the year that we've uh, that we've been around and that's all thanks to you guys as, as teaching pros to help us grow. So Bryce, just the slide before that is gonna be the introduction to Coach Connect. And again, thank you to everyone uh, staying on on a Monday afternoon. I know it's uh, exhausting after two hours of listening to people talk. Uh, again, Coach Connect, uh, it's an in-app platform that allows golfers to receive remote instruction, but using their shot videos. This is kind of similar to that of a Coach Now or a V1, uh, but right now this is this is everything in one. It's your videos, it's your shot trace combined with your statistics, all in one uh, uh, in-app messaging platform. So it's really the first of its kind to kind of bring everything together in one spot, uh, you know, outside of a computer. Next slide, please. Again, some of the benefits that this provides is it allows you to interact with your students uh, and also grow your student base, right? So a lot of people who just uh, teach at a country club uh, or just at a driving range, this allows you to create a profile and market yourself outside of that. So not only you're expanding your student base, but you're increasing your potential revenue and just overall getting a better uh, teaching experience. Now on the flip side for a golfer, me being in St. Louis and, and wanting to get an, uh, a lesson from Mike Malaska, now I don't have to fly out to Arizona, uh, you know, spend the money on the trip, on the hotel and the lesson. I can now just do that from my home, uh, from my phone. So it, it's increasing the capability for uh, student to teacher as well as teacher to student's uh, connection. So uh, it, not only is it easy, it's affordable, uh, but you're also getting the exact same quality of information as that in-person lesson. Okay, next slide, please. So after doing all this, and uh, we've had this in the pipeline for a while, uh, we actually announced a, a, a partnership with Golf Digest. And with them, we're working on Coach Connect to bring access to their drills, their, a lot of their information is gonna be integrated with our platform to help bring you this you know, vast uh, you know, database of information uh, to share with your students. And it's, it's all gonna be in app, it's gonna be incredibly simple to use. We're now the official launch monitor of Golf Digest because of this. Uh, and then on top of that, once this Golf Digest platform is live, you'll be able to market yourselves, uh, you know, within this app uh, and say, you know, students will be able to find you kind of like a, you know, find an expert page that a lot of uh, uh, technology companies would have online. Okay. Now again, we wouldn't be doing this if you guys can make a little bit of money off of it outside of it. So we do have a wholesale program uh, that's, you know, either in bulk uh, with everything going on, uh, you know, in the world today, we've actually uh, kind of created a unique uh, way for uh, instructors and clubs alike to offer this online. Uh, we would set you up essentially with a coupon code that you could share with your members uh, they would get a little discount on the on the device and you guys would get a, a, a cut on it as well. So there's really a no risk. Uh, it's a no risk way for you to kind of dip your toe in the water and see, all right, how many of my members are actually interested in this? And once you get them signed up and if you want to use this for instruction, now there's it, it's already you already have uh, devices in your community con to connect with people. So I, I'd be happy to share a lot more information on on that, uh, you know, at a later time or one-on-one, -on -one, 
it's really club dependent, but I wanted to make sure that was uh, aware to everyone. Next slide. The next slide is, is really just tech specs. Uh, again, you've seen pictures of it with the phone on the device. Uh, it's no big, I, I can fit it in my back pocket. Uh, it comes in a little carrying case, just like that of a, of a range finder. So you just stick it in your bag. Uh, it's battery operated, uh, so you can uh, charge it, whether it's in use or you know at home. Uh, it, it's it's done, designed to be super easy to use uh, and available to you at any time, really. So there we go. Again, super tiny. And then if we just go to the next page, this is kind of the, the end all be all. We do have a PGA member special because we are partnered with uh, the, these, these different sections. Uh, and if you guys want to get one for yourself, uh, we give you a, a, an immediate discount, bringing it down to $350. So it saves you $150 just so you can kind of see what it's like. Uh, we don't want to burden you with a bulk order to start off with. We want to make sure you're comfortable with the unit and you know fully aware of the ins and outs and the intricacies of it. So. Uh, that is the, the, the special pricing. Um, if you're interested in that, my contact information is on the next slide. Uh, my email is just jeff at rapsoda.com. I am Jeff with a G, so make sure to spell it correctly if you're trying to reach me. Uh, but again, um, thank you for, for taking the time again on the Monday afternoon to, to listen to me. I'll coordinate with Dave an email later this week or, le or next week. So make sure uh, you guys have my contact information. And I really hope to connect with uh, everyone on an individual basis. Um, and thanks, thanks again, David. I appreciate your time. All right, Jeff. Thank you very much. And I don't, I know Bryce in the back end. If we have any questions, uh, let me know. But that does uh, bring to a conclusion the education portion of uh, the summer meeting. And we again want to thank Club Car and Rap Soto for their time uh, and effort today to present this material to the members and. We're very excited to get back to playing as they discussed earlier on June 22nd at Monarch Beach Golf Links. Uh, so if there, if you do have any questions and didn't get them answered today, uh, please feel free to reach out to myself or anyone else at the SCPGA staff. Uh, have a great week and we will see everyone soon. Thanks Dave, thanks everyone.